All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Kyrotech Crunch. We're going to talk about the bottleneck, just some of my overall thoughts on it, ways that you can avoid it, that you can help it, and just kind of giving you, there is some good stuff about Kyrotechs that I think we don't always take into consideration when we look at just how many of them we need. So let's dive into our video, but first and foremost, huge shout out to the channel members. Thank you guys so much for your continued support of this channel. Guys, this is my shameless plug, right? There's, there's links in the description down below if you're interested in joining channel memberships. Otherwise, subscribing, that is free. Leaving that thumbs up for likes and leaving comments, that's also free. It just helps me so much. You guys got to see Puppy walking around the background. So let's get into our video and talk about Kyrotex. So the amount of Kyrotex we need in this game is crazy, right? Kyrotex are a huge bottleneck. I think once you get over that core gear, everything kind of gets halted because of Kyrotex. And I just have three examples here of squads that are, you know, more recent that take a <laughs> asinine amount of Kyrotex. So you have the Kyrotex batch. You have the, the Calcastus requirements. You need 2,600 total Kyrotex to take these characters to relic levels. 2,600 total Kyrotex to take them to relic levels. That is it unbelievably crazy unbelievably crazy how many kyrotex that is just like that is you need i think you need less total kyrotex to get kylo ren supreme leader kylo ren than you do cal Kestis. like that is just unbelievable so yeah take that now i'll say that i think the, the yeah I, I think it's less i think it's still less even if you didn't take them to relic levels but you're gonna want these characters at relic levels anyway so you know take that with a grain of salt and then finally, you also have your Inquisitors, which take a lot of Kyrotech because you not only need to gear the five to get Grand Inquisitor, you need to gear Grand Inquisitor, and then of course you're gonna have to gear Reva as well. But the first way that you can earn those Kyrotech, as I've covered, is assault battles. You're gonna be able to get those Kyrotechs through assault battles, and that's kind of my you know plug into solving this. Now, the big thing with Kyrotech that you're gonna have to understand is that, like I said in my video. The amount of Kyrotech you earn in Assault Battles is never going to... It's going to take you years and years and years to repay what you spent on those characters. But the way to think of the Assault Battle rewards is it's not a reward for getting that squad to... Like, you're not building characters. You're not building teams to complete those Assault Battles. You're building those teams because they're good. And the Assault Battles are kind of this extra bonus reward, right? So... You know, it is something that the Kyrotech bottleneck gets a little bit easier as you get further and further in the game because you're going to have more resources and more tools to be able to get them, right? So Assault Battles is kind of that, you know, my gateway into the next part of this. So obviously there's two kinds of Kyrotech in the game. We have the Shock Prods, right? Mark 7 Shock Prods, and we have the Mark 9 Battle Computers. Those are the two kinds of Kyrotechs when you're using them before the finishing piece of a gear 12 character when you're using them here you're going to need 50 of each kind that's just the way that works right you see that you need 50 of each kind when you get down to the finisher pieces you'll need a hundred of either one or the other so you guys can see right for that specific piece i needed it for geonosian brood alpha if i go to this one i need it for bb8 and again you see two of them need 50 right two times i need 100 so you need you know, before relics, it's 50 of each. To get two relics, then you need 100 as the finisher piece. So whenever you look at a character, one of the Kyrotex will always be 100 more than the other one because it's on the finisher. Now, something to keep in mind is that the shock prods are needed way more often than the computers. That you look across the game and you're going to run out of shock prods a lot more quickly than you'll run out of computers. It's unfortunate it's just the way the game works i forget who showed that but i like trust me it's there that the prods are just a more common gear piece now with the computers what i personally do when i'm going after computers i use my guild event currency too and my gac currency to get those um it's something that i just i really think that's the best way to do it right so i use my get two here obviously i have my get two ships Right? I have Negotiator, I have Malevolence, so I can afford to just spend those uh, computers, right? use this currency to buy those Mark 9 Kyrotech computers when I need to. I can also use my GAC currency for them when needed. We'll kind of cover why I bought these pieces, right? But you, know, you can use the GAC currency for those pieces as well. One of the things to note, right, is that yes, the prods are needed more, 
but when you go into like the store if you were to buy these out of the store look i can get 15 of them for 975 currency but when it's the other piece when it's the shock prods you can only buy five of them at a time for 325 currency so it's a lot easier to farm the computers because you don't need to buy it as many times as the shock prods which is something that i've always found very very funny that you can't get 15 of the other kind but you know that's capital games for you so the prods are needed more so again computers you know get to GAC currency that's kind of the primary ways I get those now the other thing that I've done is I will actually go when I'm farming my galactic legend tickets I will use that to farm you know dark side 8a which is the node that these pieces are on it's just you know when you're farming those galactic legend tickets I think that's your best bang for your buck at this point because you're going to get your core gear elsewhere so the chirotex are a great way just to kind of stockpile that horde a little bit you're earning dark side tickets at the same time it's a win-win situation all around so that is my you know for the computers primarily using stores to obtain them in terms of like if i'm farming them i use store currencies for them and then obviously during your dark side galactic legend tickets you can farm them now the <laughs> Aria, can we not? Aria, can we not? I apologize for the rude interruption. Now, shock prods are on light side 7B. So those, again, dark side galactic legend tickets, you want to farm them. But the light side 7B is Wampa approved. And the reason that node is Wampa approved is because it helps you get bronzium cards right it helps you get those bronzy and wiring materials let me show you how so again if you go to your light side area and we go to light side 7b all the way over here you guys will see that there's this piece right here this mark 5 fabrotech data pad so not only am i earning those shock prods right i'm farming the node but you're also going to be able to get bronzy and wiring out of it which is right here right this piece here you go and find it and look at that light side 7b there it is it's a fantastic node for that and bronzium wiring to me is the much more difficult component in terms of relic materials. It's the much more difficult component to farm comparative to carbonite circuit boards where these, they're a little bit more accessible in terms of just farming a node and getting a lot of them or even buying packs. I feel like the price of these is a lot less. So in my mind, you know, bronzeums are a much more lucrative farm in my personal opinion. So what I've always said, and I've said this before, is that when I'm farming, like I'm only like my node farming in regular energy is always on light side 7B unless it was Galax, unless I was farming dark side Galactic Legend tickets. Everything else goes to light side 7B to get those Chirotex. Now, before we move on to, you know, uh, maybe I'll cover this and then we'll kind of move to something. So the dark side piece will get you carbonite circuit board materials. You look, you know, if we go to the, um, it will earn you some carbonite circuit boards, which I know for a lot of players is a big hole. So if you look, it's this piece, where is it at? I know it's around here somewhere. Come on, where are you at? Where are you at, little buddy? There you are. This piece right here, if we scroll all the way over, right, 8A, you're going to earn this piece and you're going to be able to earn some carbonite circuit boards. Not a lot, right? The conversion rate isn't amazing, but you can earn some. Now, the other piece that was on there is this um, down here, this Mark VI uh, power cell, which again is for bronzium, just not nearly at the same rate you look. These are two each comparative to 10 each for this piece. So these are five times more lucrative for bronzium wiring. So in my, again, just, you know, the way I look at that you're getting a lot more bang for your buck out of your relics if you're farming the bronzium wiring through light side 7a than if you're trying to farm carbonite circuit boards and a little bit of bronzium wiring on you know 7b and on 7b you're also earning these pieces which again you can use for chromium transistors which aren't a huge bottleneck but it's better than nothing right it is better than nothing so those are two things i wanted to cover now the one thing i'm going to mention here is i talked about how i buy my computers with get two and the GAC currency. That is the case, except when I'm in a massive hole for shock prods. Because you need prods more often, if you need to supplement, if you're like, man, I need a lot more of those than I do computers right now, 
that's where you just go and you use that currency for the shock prods as well and just kind of find that balance of where you need to get the shock prods and the computers and kind of keep them they don't need to be at the same level you just want to get them to the point that you can successfully earn them i don't know if you guys can hear my dog chewing a chew toy in the background so i do apologize if that's coming through the microphone so again you know that's the the idea with shock prods is you kind of supplement them with those currencies when you really have to otherwise try and save that for your computers and that way there's some parity between those two farms now other things that you can get you know other ways to get carbonite or these carbonite other ways to get kyrotex you've got territory battles you got territory wars those are great rewards again it's going to vary on your galactic power of how many you're going to be achieving i think you need to at least be doing geonosis territory battles but in rise of the empire you are going to get a decent amount of them and again, as your guild's galactic power increases, you're going to earn more of them through territory wars. Then remember that in, you know, you're going to get them in galactic challenges, galactic conquest as well. But primary, but also remember that when you're doing your GCs, right, you get them here, right. If you're earning a high enough box, you can get um, those. But every time you complete your daily objectives, come down in here, you get this special prize box, and it will give you three Kyrotex every single day, three random Kyrotex. So that, you know, over the course of a year, that's over a thousand Kyrotex that you're getting just for showing up every day. I mean, I'm taking that to the bank and running, right? That's, that's really, really good stuff there. Those are some other ways that you're kind of going to slowly increase your amount of Kyrotex. And that's something that players need to understand is that they're a piece that you can passively obtain through, you think, assault battles, territory battles, territory wars, daily logins, conquest, and your you know, galactic challenges that eventually you'll kind of start obtaining some of them without having to farm. So it is, it is nice that you think like when you're farming those galactic legend tickets, you're like, man, but I'm not getting any of the shock prods. Well, that's where you offset here, but you also remember that you're getting them through all of these other things as well. So that's really, really helpful for Kyrotex. Now there's also these gambler packs, right? We got Lando there as the kind of, you know, but the gambler packs, this pack is amazing. Let me actually, let me go this way and show you. Because I think it's a little bit more, kind of show you the cost and everything like that. So um, where's Cal Kestis? I think he needs a piece somewhere, right? Where's your Kyrotex at, Cal? There it is. So if I go to this piece, right? If you look here, 25 pieces cost me 700 crystals. 25 Kyrotex is 700 crystals. So if you scroll all the way over through all the various packs, there's this gamble pack. It's a 50-50 shot of getting 25 or 50 Kyrotex for 690 crystals. So you're going to save 10 crystals no matter if you purchase these via the shipment. Compared to buying them via shipments, you're going to save 10 crystals. This is a pack that if you've kind of flushed with some crystals, obviously I'm saving for Leviathan, so I'm not going to be purchasing this. But otherwise, I, you know, might not, I might think about it. Your, your chances here, remember, it's a 50-50 shot. So if you pull it the first time and you get 25 Pulling it a second time, your chances, it's still 50-50, but if you think you do it two times, you're averaging it out that you could get 75 of these, right? That, you know, that's that math. Now, again, take that with a grain of salt, but it is a 50-50 chance. I've done this. I've gotten 25. I've done it, and I've gotten 50. But if you get the 50, you're actually saving yourself a significant amount. Like, you are, the 50 pull here is a better rate than what you're going to get via crystals on average. That if you just farm these with regular energy, the 50 Kyrotex for 690 crystals is a far better deal than what you can get farming that node. So these are really, really good. If you've kind of got some extra crystals laying around, that's a great gamble to make in this game. That is a pack. That is one of those packs that I think Capital Games actually did us a huge favor on. I really like them. Something that is a free to play if you kind of save up for your crystals and you keep an eye for those packs like that one, that's a solid one to do. And then the one positive note with Kyrotex, I know it seems like every character just needs so many. I mean, you look up at the top here and it's just Kyrotex galore. The one thing to note with Kyrotex, the only time that Kyrotex make their way into the game that, they, that you need more of them is when a new character gets released. Now, yes, you're like, there's constantly new characters, but the same thing goes with signal data. The difference is right now, if they were to add a new relic level, that changes how much signal data we need, changes how many relic materials we need, but it doesn't change the Kyrotex. So the Kyrotex economy transitions much more slowly because once those Kyrotex are on, you don't need to go back and do anything else. That that character that was Relic 3 that now needs to go to Relic 7, you need to get all the different kinds of signal data and Relic materials to do that. But with Kyrotex, they're done. 
And that's the one thing that I really think we need to focus on with Kyratech is that it is a once and done kind of situation. That once you get them to gear 13 or relic 3, whatever, once you get them to gear 13, you don't ever need, Kyratechs won't ever rear their ugly head again. But you could have a character at relic 8 or relic 9, and if they release a new relic level to relic 10, guess what's going to rear its ugly head? The signal data, the relic materials. And so it is the one positive note about Kyratechs. It's kind of a once and done sort of thing. It will, it will transition over time. That as you do get further and further in the game, it gets a little bit easier to obtain these materials because one, you're focusing a lot more on higher relic levels, so it's less time that you're spending putting Kyratex on, but also it's just that natural accumulation really does start to add up. As you're able to do more of those assault battles, as your guild's GP grows, you get more and more Kyratech, and eventually you'll find this happy medium where you might run out of Kyratech at times, but you were able to expend a whole lot of it. So... That's the video, guys. That's the Kyrotech bottleneck. Let me know your thoughts. Like, subscribe, comment. I love all you. May the force be with you. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Cheers.